I'm excited to kick off our first presentation. We're going to be having a lot of great presentations throughout the day. Today, one of my favorite presenters, Dr. Kareen Kleinhaus. I always like uh, Dr. Kleinhaus, please join me. I, I always uh, am I'm very excited whenever I get a chance to interact with a physician particularly an experienced physician, a clinician who's treated patients. And so when Dr. Kleinhaus joined Pluristem, you know, I was truly excited because I thought, you, you know, this is really bringing a lot of intellectual horsepower and experience into the cell therapy space. And of course, as you join Pluristem, uh, we learned of uh, uh, the potential for these heterogeneous allogeneic uh, placental-derived stem cells to be used potentially in pregnant women in preeclampsia, and I know that that's, you know, one of many, many indications, but I'm excited to have you up this morning and, and join us and talk a little bit about Pluristem, and take it away. Okay, Thank you. Thanks. Um, is there a way to switch this to the next slide, please? I don't know if there's a button somewhere or anything. Is there a, is there a clicker? There we go. Okay. Uh, backwards. There we go. Okay, great. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, so just a two-second introduction about the company for those of you who haven't heard about it before. Okay. Um, so what we do is we take cells from the placenta and we modify them and expand them in patented bioreactors which provide a unique three-dimensional uh, microenvironment for them to grow in. And this way we develop our cells into different products, uh, distinct cell products which uh, target different indications. So um, if you look at our pipeline, I'll just run through quickly and then um, move on with Jason in a conversation. Uh, the first uh, cell product that we have is called PLXPAD. Uh, we're active in several clinical areas. The uh, first one is peripheral artery disease, which is an artery uh, when cholesterol blocks, um, it's a disease rather, when cholesterol blocks the blood flow into your legs and it becomes progressively more painful to walk. And that will, that's a stage called intermittent claudication. And that progresses to critical limb ischemia uh, when you begin to have gangrene and eventually develop the amputations or uh, uh, other um, significant problems with your legs. So in those areas, we uh, completed two phase one trials in critical limb ischemia, which had really nice results. And a strategic focus for us this year uh, is to expand that and move to a phase two uh, advanced trial in either Europe or Japan. And the reason this is such a focus for us is that Europe uh, has a new pathway called the adaptive pathway where you can go to market after a strong phase two uh, for specific indications. And we've applied uh, to get accepted into that pathway. And that's, a, of course, a unique opportunity uh, for biotechs and for pharmas who want to partner with biotechs and bring their products closer to market in a short amount of time. So we are actively uh, looking for partners as well as moving along uh, to apply. Um, though we are sufficiently funded to do this trial on our own, it's always nice to, to do it with a partner. Um, intermittent claudication, which is that earlier phase. Oh, I'm sorry, one other thing. The critical limb ischemia, we're also, uh, our other main goal this year with that program is to advance in Japan to a phase two. Uh, in Japan, there's new regulations where you can go to market also after a phase two uh, in regenerative medicine for certain indications. Uh, and that's something we're also actively pursuing. So those are main strategic goals for us this year and um, to find a partner as well in Japan for that uh, activity. We're deep into conversations with multiple pharma. Obviously, their interest is in us and our product and in taking advantage of that pathway. Um, our muscle injury, we've completed a really nice phase two trial, which was done in Germany uh, in the context of hip replacement. And we found that the hip muscle that was injured during the surgery, as part of surgery, uh, is, was about 500% stronger after six months than the muscle that during the surgery did not receive our cells. So the, the cell treatment was extremely, extremely um, effective. And it was backed up by the fact that the muscle volume of the muscle that had been injured and received our cells compared to the muscle that didn't receive our cells was about 300% greater. And we also saw that in the patient who received our cells in one leg, their opposite leg was also about 40 times stronger six months out 
than in those patients who had the surgery but did not receive our cells. So we saw both a more local effect where the cells were injected and a systemic effect where um, the contralateral, the opposite leg, was also uh, much stronger. And this obviously has implications for things like atrophy, rehabilitation, uh, and muscle injury uh, in general. So we're hoping to springboard uh, into another indication that's more along the lines of hamstring tear, rotator cuff repair in that orthopedic space. Um, pulmonary arterial hypertension, we're partnered with United Therapeutics, which is a US company. Uh, they are running the trial for us in pulmonary arterial hypertension in a phase one out in Australia. And we're waiting to hear from them uh, on the data. They're running the trial. We don't uh, really have um, access to progress along the way, except that they are recruiting their second cohort of patients for that indication. Um, Preeclampsia, which Jason mentioned, is a very exciting indication. It's one of the leading killers of pregnant women in the U.S. and has no satisfactory treatment at this time. Um, we did a lot of preclinical work, and we applied to start a phase one in the, with, via the FDA here in the U.S., um, but we were told that we needed to do additional animal studies, and we're um, working on those and in communication with the FDA to optimize those protocols at this time. Um, for this first product, we have trials that were um, approved by regulatory agencies in the U.S., in Germany, in Australia, in Israel, and in South Korea. Um, so we have very uh, strong relationships and a lot of success working with regulatory agencies in all those places. Um, they is, all those have also approved, including the U.S. Uh, and EU, our factory for comparability studies, which makes our cells, where we've shown that our cells are the same whether we, do, we grow them in different factories, different bioreactors, different placental donors, we make the same cell, and that's been certified, and that's super important to establish that early on. So all your trials all with the same cells, and those provide the support for the fact that you can go to commercialization with the same cells. And uh, really realizing the importance of manufacturing and the process of making the cells early on avoids the concerns of bridging studies or issues with manufacturing or potency of cells as you change to scale up. So we can make 150,000 doses a year right now with this um, study and process that's been approved by many regulatory agencies. Um, in terms of our second distinct product, which we've shown many ways is, has a different secretion profile. Uh, we're working in two indications primarily right now. The first is actually being run and funded completely by the U.S. government, the National Institutes of Health. They're testing our cells for acute radiation syndrome, which is what you get after a nuclear catastrophe. Um, one of the ways you die uh, is that your bone marrow fails. And they're testing our cells to revive production of all three cell lines um, in the bone marrow. They've uh, already, we have results from the first two studies, the first showing a lot of uh, a magnificent improvement in survival uh, in radiated, lethally radiated animals that received our cells. And we also announced the results of, again, of their study with their scientists of a mechanism of action study, which is unique in this space to have uh, independent a uh, really uh, tight look at the mechanism of action of the shell cells, and they show that the, our cells secrete and uh, stimulate the growth of the earlier cells and the progenitor cells all the way through to the end target cells of red, white, and platelet cells. And I'll just add as a note that there is no real satisfactory treatment right now for low platelets uh, in that kind of a scenario. Our cells are off the shelf. They don't need to be matched. They're injected with a simple needle into the muscle um, to do this systemic effect. Uh, and they have a shelf life of over two years, which makes them extremely attractive to the, uh, the US government for that reason. Uh, at the same time, in parallel, the other indication we're entering in first with this second product is um, looking at incomplete uh, engraftment or failure of a bone marrow transplant that's given to patients, whether it's for uh, after chemo radiation or leukemia when the, the bone marrow is destroyed. Um, and so our cells, uh, once the bone marrow transplant is given to replace the cells of the hematologic system, our cells are given together, uh, would be um, given together. They've been uh, looked at in animal studies um, already in these contexts. We've had uh, really nice results. 
um, at the DASA Medical Center, Case Western, and we're looking at them as, as a first line to help the um, engraftments of these bone marrow transplants that have not succeeded. So that's our general um, picture uh, in a nutshell. Jason, how would sure. you like to? So, so let's talk a little bit. You know, I want to get into the pipeline and into the products, but I'd like to back up a little bit. Sure. Uh, one, one of the things that strikes me as very unique about Pluristem was the decision to do your own manufacturing. So help me understand, you know, what drove that decision? And, and, and I think it is something that separates Pluristem from just about every other cell therapy company I follow. Uh, what's that plant like? Has it been inspected? What was that investment? Why did Pluristem make that decision to put a lot of effort in upfront into manufacturing? Great. Um, okay, I sort of, as I touched on it before and as uh, Jason pointed out, it's actually an extremely important um, strategic approach that our company made this decision, or my CEO um, really has a vision for the company, made the decision that um, because the process of manufacturing the cells determines their characteristics and the, as a product, that the manufacturing had to be established and uh, consistently you could make large amounts of cells that were with batch to batch consistency that had to be established first before <laughs> running trials and before going to commercialization. Um, they spent about $20 million to build this factory, um, which is absolutely beautiful, state of the art factory. Uh, extremely efficient mechanism um, of producing the cells. They use bioreactors that create a microenvironment that's three-dimensional. It helps the cells grow quickly, and it helps us to really control um, what we train them to do uh, by changing atmospheres, sugar levels, oxygen, pH, and lots of other factors within the reactors as they develop. Um, so really this idea that the process is the product has been a, a key um, point and a key commitment of the company to figure this out first rather than after you've already it, it does gone that, that way. Does that plant meet European and U.S. Yes. and kind of global standards? Thanks, Jason. Yes. So the FDA and the EU have both approved the factory up through commercialization, show the, have approved the comparability of the cells up through commercialization, which means that, um, as I mentioned, we can take different cell, different placental donors, make different cells in different factories with different bioreactors, and we wind up with the same product with the same secretion profile, and that's a unique thing, um, and it really shows that we're, we're ready to upscale and that we have a reliable um, product. Good. And ideologically, you and I were talking a little bit about the allogeneic landscape. And when I think about the allogeneic landscape, I, you know, I'm looking at what Athersis is doing, I'm looking at what Mesoblast is doing, and of course what Pluristem is doing. Um, Pluristem is different, though. It's different in terms of the cell source and the cell mix. So can you help me understand kind of what the philosophical differences are and why Pluristem chose to go down that direction? Sure. Um, so that, that sort of ties in, first of all, to the cell source that we chose, um, which is placenta. The reason we chose the placenta is because it's the youngest adult cells, um, so to speak. They come out at birth. They haven't been in someone's body uh, who's as old as me, where I've had all the viral infections and the tox you know, exposures to whatever environmental toxins there are. These cells are really young, fresh, robust cells. Um, and we've been able, again, to show that we can take different donors to make the same product. We can make 10,000 doses from one placenta, 150,000 doses a year in our factory. And we've had um, really nice, though, of course, early stage clinical successes with these cells. Um, so we're very confident in our cell source and in our, our methods. Um, also, we, from the placenta, we select out cells from the maternal side for the first product, from the fetal side, the child side for the second product, and we are able and we're working on developing additional products, so we find it a really great source and a, a way to work um, in this method with allogeneic. Okay, approach. so so what I see in Pluristem then is a company that has manufacturing, has a unique cell source that they believe in, a heterogeneous source, so it's a mixture of different cells and a variety of indications. You said two things that I thought were very intriguing. One, you said that you believe in intramuscular delivery to treat systemic disease. Help me understand that. 
and then we'll talk a little bit about Europe and Japan and how those changing regulations might actually impact your march towards proof of concept. Great. So, um, I'm just, uh, I'm sorry. The muscular injection. Yes. And why is I okay. am different? Uh, two and a half hours in the car. I'm not in a great sense. So. Uh, in terms of intramuscular injection, that's something, again, that we've been working on for many, many years, um, and that's the way we've gone. The thinking is uh, because of how we see our cells working. Um, the way we feel that they work and the way we've shown um, many times and has been seen in other um, in academic institutions as well, the cells are injected into the muscle, and they sit there. They sit there for four, five, six weeks, and then they wash away. They don't differentiate, they don't engraft, they don't stay, but they do stay long enough, several weeks, to work with the mechanism that we have found for them, which is they sense chemical signals from damaged tissue in the body, and then they secrete a bunch of a really a wide range of therapeutic proteins that address those um, damaged tissues, for example, uh, anti-inflammatory or pro, um, proteins or proteins that stimulate growth of blood vessels or um, proteins that stimulate growth of uh, or stimulate the bone marrow to recover. So, um, and we've shown this in experiment after experiment and in our clinical trials, um, when you inject in the muscle, uh, you will get a systemic effect, either bone marrow recovery, or you will get uh, even the opposite leg in the surgery becoming much stronger in that um, uh, muscle study that I told you about. Uh, and, and we've seen it in, in a lot of contexts. So this is something we feel is, is the way to go. Um, it avoids the need for techs and IVs and, and all the difficult things and makes it easy to, uh, to give in an office and to use um, for treatment, hopefully for many indications. So Corinne, wrap up with me a little bit mm -hmm. on, here Pluristem is, manufacturing is in place, you have a unique product, you have a unique delivery format, there are, might be rapid pathways, so close with me on where are we in Europe, where are we in Japan, how is that a rapid pathway where I can get to proof of concept and believe that I'm gonna see an inflection point as an investor. Great, so um, these pathways, as I said, there's one in Europe called Adaptive Pathway, and in that pathway, if you get accepted into it um, for specific indications, and we're applying for that with our CLI, you can go to limited marketing after phase two. So in the best of all possible worlds, um, if we would be accepted into that pathway and do our phase two, again, and get approved, again, best of all possible worlds, we could see being in the market in about three years, which is not bad for a uh, biotech developing a medicine, as you guys um, sure know very well. Um, and the reason J this is in, uh, in Japan as well, but for regenerative medicine, uh, same thing. If you get accepted into that pathway and you have a strong phase two, then you have the option or the ability upon approval to go to market uh, from there, uh, again, with a, obviously with follow-up afterwards uh, of your patients. And uh, both places have their own motivation. The European Union is really wants to address uh, diseases that have no adequate uh, treatments right now and that are life-threatening. And in Japan, they have a real strong interest in building the cell therapy uh, industry, so to speak, in their country. And they are very comfortable with regenerative medicine and cell therapy in their uh, looking to push that forward. Corinne, thank you so much. We're really excited to watch the clinical progress of Pluristem. And, you know, I, I think this is one of the exciting companies in the aloe space. I think success with Mesoblast, success with Athersis, uh, by virtue of default, will be success at Pluristem. Thank you very much. Let's move on to our. Thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you.